Hello everybody, this is Ice, and welcome back to the first video in my new and improved Minecraft Redstone Calculator Tutorial Series. In this video, we'll be making the user input panel, and we'll be starting off with some of the basics. But first of all, let's just get some boring preliminaries out of the way. This is the second edition of this series. I think it's been long awaited, and... This time, we will actually finish it. So, for those who aren't sure, this is a series where we will build a Minecraft Redstone calculator that has a perfectly working number screen and does addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division perfectly. It will support negative numbers, and it will support binary numbers up to, I think... I can't remember off the top of my head, but it will support very large numbers. And yeah, it should be pretty cool. So, what you need for this series is a pretty good knowledge of the basics of redstone. This is going to be the kind of series where we put together the stuff where you might do in the Redstone for Beginners series and put it all together into one large build. So that's about all I have to say about this series. If you're new to this series and you have any questions about it, then please do ask, but I think we should get right down into building this thing. So, the first, the thing we're going to do today is basically set up a working user input panel, and to start off with, you want to have some sort of thing built. Now this is what I started with. We have a nine button panel. This part is pretty important, so I do this somehow. So here we have a nine button panel. I'd make that. Two blocks over, I have a four-button panel here that represents the four operations. Plus is up here, minus is over here, times is down here, and division is down here. So, that's our numbers and our operations. There's a reset button next to this. This will be an important button when we set everything back to zero. Over on the other side, I'm going to have to move this part over in a minute here. I'll do it now. Over on the other side, we have... Oops. Oh, I'm going to have to show chat. Over on the other side, we have a button to change the sign of the number we're currently working with. And a button to actually perform the calculation. So this is pretty simple, you can do this with any materials of your choosing, but it should end up looking something like this. The only reason I don't spend time working on it on camera is because there's no need to, it's just a button panel. And I think most people watching this series should be perfectly capable of building it. Notice I haven't done any of the redstone yet. Alright, so I guess that's the next step, let's do that. Alright, so here we go. The first step to building this calculator, well, to building this input panel, is to encode the output from this button, the input from this button panel, into binary. So that's what we're going to do first, and let's get started. So you'll come out on this side, assuming you have something that looks like this, and place six torches here. These are going to be our outputting torches, and three above. All right, now what we can do is we can say this down here, we're going to have three outputs, one here, one here, and one here. These are going to be our inputs from the bottom row. Over here, we're going to have three more outputs, inputs like this, like so. Alright, so the next, and then finally, what we need to do is we need to come up here, place three blocks, and this is going to be our top layer. Alright, so now we have three signals that are coming out, and now we need to separate them out. So basically, again, what we're trying to do is have these come outwards so we can encode them into binary. To do that, we're going to start by bringing this bottom one down a little bit. So we need to have it 
so that there can be a wire, in, an encoding wire in between them, so that far down, and then another block, like so. Then you just want to bring these, these wires out a little bit longer, and put redstone on each of them, like so. And the rest of this can be done off camera, so you can do these other two yourself. Then, you're going to bring this block down, also one, and bring it out to the same place, like so. And place redstone on that and all. So from here, we have, or we should have, yep, uh, encodable wires. So that's that. You can either world edit the other lines after you bring this one out, or just build them yourself. And after we get back, we will actually build the encoder. Okay, so once you're done stacking that, what you should have is an input panel with wires extending out of it that does nothing. And hopefully all of your wires work. When you hit any of the buttons, the corresponding wire will turn off, or should. Alright, so this is what we have. The next step, as I said, is to encode these signals to binary which is not that difficult. Before we do that, I'd just like to extend these wires out a little bit by three blocks each. So again, that's... If I had a repeater, it would be a pretty easy job. Like so. And then you can just world edit that up to the other pieces. So, like that. Oops. Oh. Just world edit that onto the other wires as follows. And then also you can do it outwards. Expand one, stack two. All right, so now we have these full wires. And the next thing we want to do is extend some wires out of here so that we can use this, use these signals in binary. So our decoded signals are going to go onto four wires, I think, that look like this. So you're just going to add four of these for each layer. So for instance, you do one like this, and these are going to be the wires that your binary signal comes out of. Then you can repeat this process for other wires. So yep. When you're done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. So this is what we have, and notice we haven't included the zero button in this. We'll handle that in a moment, but for now, we need to actually encode these signals onto the binary wires. So if we look here, clearly this will be our one button, two button, three button, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you want to use a different convention and for some reason use this as your one button, that's fine. I'm going to use this as my button for one. So basically what we need to do is have this go on to four binary wires. Now the least significant bit, or the one bit, will be on this side. So binary one will go here. I think that's right. Yeah, we'll use the least significant bit here. So this, you'll put one torch here, and this will signify our one. You'll put another torch here. This will go on to the 2-bit, again, just for just basic binary counting. Um, on the next wire, this should be 3. So we'll put a torch on 2 and 1, since 2 plus 1 is 3. If we come up here, then we'll place a torch on 4. A torch will go here, and another here for 5. On the next wire over, we'll place a torch here and here for six, and you'll see that we have something looking like this. For seven, we place torches here, here, and here, since four plus two plus one is seven. For this next one, we'll have to go over to eight, and for the last one, we will just use nine. So now, if we, well, we should connect these up something like this. So I'll do this on one and then I'll stack it over. Basically what we want to do is to connect all of these three wires together so that we have a final output. 
To do that, we will use some glowstone towers. I know there are plenty of people that would rather use slabs. I think glowstone's better, easier to find, and harder, easier to place. If you like to use slabs, then by all means use slabs. Alright, so here we go. If you make this wire like so... In fact, we should move this out one. So add repeaters here and here, so you make sure to not lose your signal strength. And now, if we test this out after stacking, so world edit here and here, expand it one over and stack it three times, I think, for four bits. All right, let's try it. If we go over here and we hit the five button, we should be getting a five. I can't really see it. Yeah. So, you can test this out with different numbers. You'll see that whatever button you press, the corresponding number will be received and encoded in binary. So that's pretty cool. This is going to be the input that goes into the calculator. The next thing we want to do is actually have a button that, or have a signal that says we pressed some button at all. So that's where the zero button will come in. So let's look at that. All right, so in order to use your zero button, you're just going to have to change the layout of this middle input a little bit at your panel. For this middle torch, you want to put a block above it and then have a, red, a staircase of redstone that comes down one, two, three, and onto your wires. This shouldn't be that difficult to change. Then, for this one here, before you would have had a torch here, you, you should replace this with a repeater, which should go into a block, this should go into a dust and a torch, and this should come down onto your um, middle line here. So that's just allowing you to free up space to use the zero button here. So underneath this block is the zero button. We'll come down here with a dust and a torch, and this is the line for the zero button. So to wire this thing up, basically what you want to do is come down here, just low enough so that you go underneath these, like this. And you can stop this here with a torch. So just stick redstone dust on all of this. It should connect fine. If it doesn't reach, then you can use a repeater, it's fine. And now, what we want to do is we want to connect, well, first of all, you can change these outermost blocks to torches. Now what we want to do is we want to connect all of these torches on the end together to make a single wire. And what this wire will do is it will tell us some button has been pressed, whether it's the zero button or the nine button. This is just so that we can have a signal that, for instance, will trigger the input shifters later on. Okay, so off camera, I've just made three glowstone towers. This shouldn't be anything not routine. Basically, each glowstone tower starts coming from this torch into a wire, and the wire goes up through the glowstone tower. It should connect easily to this torch, and easily to this torch. Now you can do the same thing for each of these three wires, and at the top, you just want to connect these together with blocks of, nor of a normal block. So this will connect all of your buttons except the zero button. And to actually connect the zero button, it's not too hard. We're just going to place two more glowstones underneath here, if I can place blocks today, and have this connect in like so. So when we do this, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, so you should put a repeater here, just so that everything reaches nice and well. And now, if you send this out over, what you will have is a fully working input panel. So I suppose we should test it out before we stop. Um, let's get out some lamps. Place them here, and... Okay. 
Okay, well, because of glowstone, we'll move the lamps up. Like so. This isn't permanent, this is just for testing purposes. So, for instance, when we press the 5 button, let's try it again, we see that for these binary inputs, this one and this one turned on. This is 1 and this is 4, which does make 5, that's good. And also, our master input turned on. So remember that this should turn on whenever we press any of our buttons. If we press the 0 button, then indeed, none of these things turn on. Why would they? But this one does. Alright, if we go over here and press the 9 button, as you can see, this one and this one turned on, 1 and 8. And, of course, our master switch turned on. So you can test this out with all the different buttons. It should work pretty cool. And, yeah, next time what we'll be doing is we'll be working on a screen for our calculator with numbers and buttons. And hopefully after that we'll start actually connecting stuff up and making things work. So, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this first video. If you have any feedback on my style of tutorials or whatever, if you want me to be a bit more detailed or something, then please tell me. But yeah, that's about that. Hopefully you enjoyed, and as always, bye now.